Hello there, my name is Sudarshan and welcome to my video lecture series called Linux Under 15. So the basic idea here is to give you a key concept within the Linux kernel and to keep the video within 15 minutes so that you do not get bored and also you have something to take away from the video uh, at the end of the lecture. So who's this video for? If you're a beginner uh, who is trying to venture into this amazing area of Linux, this video is perfect for you. Uh, if you're an application developer uh, who knows how to write an application for maybe for Android or for Linux, but then does not know as to what's exactly going on under the hood, this video is perfect because now you can leverage these knowledge to write an even better application for your system. So without any further delay, let's get right into it. Okay, so since this is my first video, I'm just going to be giving you an introduction to the Linux kernel architecture, and I'm going to be explaining some key concepts inside the Linux kernel architecture that is going to serve as a backbone for the future videos. So if you don't understand some of these, it's totally fine. I'm going to be covering them in the future videos. Um, but uh, this video is basically for you to know what is in there and what to expect. So before we look at what a Linux kernel is, let's see what a, Linux, what a kernel is. A kernel can be thought of as an enhanced machine that abstracts computer on a high level. Um, a kernel is something that manages resources. So uh, in this particular image, you can see that um, the kernel sits right in between your application and uh, your hardware. And therefore, when you as a user gives a command to the kernel to perform a certain task, uh, it's up to the kernel to take care of the complicated stuff that goes on, um, the way a particular hardware is supposed to communicate, um, and you know, to accomplish this task and return the results back to the user. So, and just by doing this, the kernel is going to abstract these details from the user and make the complex work look simple. Um, so you can. So basically, the kernel is like an assistant for you. Processes and threads. So these are some. Uh, th these are uh, these are some important components of your Linux kernel, um, for any operating system, for that matter. Uh, applications. Any application servers or programs that run on your system are processes. In it being the first process uh, that is that starts upon boot up uh, and from an init process there are multiple processes that generates. So basically a process can generate multiple processes or threads depending on what kind of uh, what the functionality uh, that the user wants to implement. Uh, so a similarity between the two is that uh, both are an independent sequence of execution so and uh, which are which are you know um, computed in a sequential order uh, so if you have a program that prints one to five uh, you're going to print them in sequence from one two three four and five and uh, you're not going to jumble them up so it's a uh, sequence it's a sequential execution of instructions um, however, the difference between a process and thread is that um, multiple process that generates from a single process run on a different memory space, whereas multiple threads uh, that generate from a process or a thread can run will run on the same memory space. This particular example will make things simpler for you to understand. Uh, so let's say you have a web browser and uh, the left left image actually um, simulates multiple processes uh, let's say you have a main process which is your main web browser let's say your chrome browser that's running in the main process and then uh, you, when the user wants to download a certain file um, what the, the process will not start the download on the main process itself because as we learned earlier a process is a sequential execution so therefore the user will have to wait until the download completes to further continue using the browser so um, what the web browser would do is that create another child process and ask the child process to download that particular file uh, so that the user can continue using the uh, using the browser uh, now when the download completes uh, 
the file that completed down that uh, the file that um, was currently downloaded will uh, will reside on a separate memory location a different one from the main process and the problem with this is that the um, main process will have to uh, will have to create another communication uh, with the child process to get the data or copy the data from the child process to the main process now this is a huge headache all this can be um, avoided if you had a th if you had threads so let's say your main process or main thread is the um, web browser and when the user wants to download something uh, he's uh, a child thread is created which uh, will complete the download for the uh, for the user but however um, the file that's downloaded gets downloaded in the same memory location as the main thread so you don't need any special communication you get the main main thread can directly fetch that particular data uh, since it's in the same memory location however there are some problems with doing so because if if the main thread and the child thread both access the same memory location at the same time since they are running in parallel um, your system might crash now we look uh, if the, if this is too difficult to understand it's totally fine we'll look at them in a much more detail uh, in, in my future video task switching and scheduling now that you have uh, multiple processors and threads running concurrently, um, what's going to happen is that uh, you want someone to uh, run them, run these uh, processes and uh, threads at the right time. The kernel does that for you. It's got a scheduler functionality uh, that switches and schedules um, schedules the right processes at the right time. Uh, the kernel makes this wise choice to choose the right process to run at the right CPU. So that's another important um, component of the Linux kernel. Address space. Uh, this is another very important uh, concept of the Linux kernel. Every process in the system has an impression that they have their own address space. And uh, this is made possible by the uh, virtual address space so uh, what so if you have let's say if you have two processes or two application that's running both of them think that they have the entire system for themselves and uh, this makes things much simpler for the uh, application developer because they don't have to worry about you know um, accessing uh, another part of the memory uh, that another application might be accessing uh, that, that, that some other application that's running concurrently might access. All of this is taken care of by the kernel through this concept of virtual address space. So virtual address space um, is not related to how much physical RAM you have and due to this particular setup you have two processes that might have the same virtual address but maybe mapping to a different physical address. Again I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be uh, talking about this concept in much more detail in my future videos okay so now that uh, you have address spaces uh, there are two different kind of address space that generates uh, one is the kernel space the other is the user space uh, the kernel space is the space that only the kernel uh, functions uh, can kernel processors can uh, access and user space is something that um, the kernel as well as the user space your yeah, user application can access why do we have this uh, why do we have this segregation well it's to make sure so since all the uh, important functions are uh, taken care of by the kernel you don't want a hacker to actually um, pollute your kernel and crash the system uh, therefore this uh, this segregation is very important for security purpose and due to different address spaces, you know, different uh, different type of address spaces, um, that generates different kind of privilege level. Linux has two modes of privilege: um, the kernel mode and the user mode. Uh, when you're running in kernel mode, you can access the kernel space as well as the user space. Uh, whereas when you're running on user mode, you can access only the user space and not the kernel space. Um, 
so usually when you're using a system you are us uh, you're running um, you're running in user mode and not in kernel mode um, therefore you only if you have root access to your system only then can you access your kernel files and modify uh, the way uh, the kernel is supposed to behave system calls this is another important component of the linux kernel uh, so the user process can communicate with the kernel using system calls. Uh, well, what's the point of a kernel if your uh, user application cannot communicate to the kernel? And uh, therefore, the system call makes sure that these communication takes place um, in, a much, in a pretty secure fashion. Uh, the different kind of system calls, um, traditional system calls, or if you may, are process management calls, signals, uh, files, directories, and file system, timer, and functions. Uh, do not worry a lot about these. Um, I will be kind of covering these concepts in much more detail in my future videos. Modules and hot plugging. So um, let's say you have a kernel, right? Uh, but now you want to uh, install another device externally or um, maybe internally but uh, your kernel does not know how this particular device works um, so therefore you can install a module uh, to the kernel at runtime and uh, th this is a pretty sleek functionality of the linux kernel um, Hot plugging is when you add and remove the module dynamically upon certain system change. So for example, let's say you have a USB driver. The USB driver for your uh, pen drive could be, uh, could be a module. And uh, this module will be hot plugged dynamically by the computer when the, your computer detects that a USB device has been uh, inserted. And similarly, uh, when you remove your USB device from your system, your uh, your module is going to be unloaded. So this particular functionality is called hot plugging. So in conclusion, the Linux kernel is awesome, uh, mainly because it's written by some of the best programmers in the world. Uh, it is open source, which means you can access any part of the kernel um, without paying any price. Um, and it's available to you for use. Uh, beginners can learn a lot from the um, way the source code is written, as again, since it's written by the best programmers in the world. And it's also easy to modify, uh, that is, if you know what you're doing, and um, you can probably um, crash the system, keep learning, and it's probably the best playground to uh, you know, understand and learn about operating system. And also, it's very easy to deploy um, if you know what you're doing again. So, yeah, Linux kernel is pretty awesome. Okay, so this completes my first video. I hope you had something uh, to learn from this video and uh, you had something to take away from this. Um, please subscribe uh, to my channel and uh, share this video with people who you think might find this useful. Um, and uh, like I said uh, earlier, I have uh, much more videos coming up, uh, which are going to talk about these concepts and much more uh, in detail. So hang in there.